15 years ago today, the original iPhone launched. But today, to honor the iPhone's 15th birthday, I'm gonna give you guys a look behind the scenes at some never before seen prototype iPhone 2Gs that are worth as much as half a million dollars. So yeah, buckle up, because this is the iPhone 2G story like you've never seen it before. <clears throat> Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. So first off, before we get into this video, I have to give a huge shout out to Donglebook Pro who lent me his absolutely insane collection of prototype iPhone 2Gs. Check out his channel linked in the description below. Now, for understandable reasons, the iPhone 2G has become a bit of a collector's item. I have my collection of them here, which is not worth half a million dollars. But just the fact that Apple was able to launch the iPhone in the first place is nothing short of a miracle. Because just six months before these things came out, they weren't anything like this. This might look like a normal iPhone 2G, but based on its serial number, this prototype was manufactured around a week, give or take, from Steve Jobs' keynote on January 9th, 2007. Some ways that we can tell it's different is if we look on the back, there's no text that says iPhone. There's no text that has the size of the storage. What we see instead is text that reads, this device has not been authorized as required by the rules of the FCC. And if we flip it over, you'll notice this does not look like iOS. This is a very early testing interface that doesn't really feature a whole lot. When connected to debugging tools, the iBoot version, which is essentially the bootloader that runs on iOS devices, is 87. Right now, we are above version 7500, and this is 87. And in fact, while this phone looks very similar to the production models, there's one key difference that actually caused a lot of turmoil inside Apple, and that's the screen. On this, it's plastic. You can see this very clearly when you pop it on a scale, and we see that this weighs 139 grams, whereas a production iPhone weighs 143. According to Jeff Williams, right after Steve walked off stage, he said, we need to put a glass screen on this. He didn't like how the plastic would scratch in his pocket. So they had to call up Corning, who had this project called Gorilla Glass that was sitting on their R&D shelf. And in the six months from when this phone was manufactured to when the launch one came out, they worked out a way to make a glass display cover for the phone. That's literally insane. Steve Jobs' iconic keynote at Macworld in January 2007 has been dissected over and over again, especially his most famous line. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? But what you don't get to see in this historic 90 minutes is the insane level of choreography that went into getting it right. Everything was rehearsed to the second because the prototype iPhones that they used on stage were buggy, fragile messes. That's because the development had been full of glitches, setbacks, and wild prototypes, including one that Steve initially dismissed as a joke. Could you imagine an iPhone with an iPod interface? Well, as you'll see today, that wasn't actually that far off. Clearly, developing such an extraordinary product from scratch was no easy task. But you know what is an easy task? Developing your stunning website with today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy for you to construct a convincing site like mine, which I'm creating to petition Apple to make a 15-inch MacBook Air finally. We all want it! 
just give it to us. I can easily customize a template and even set up email campaigns where I can recruit fellow 15-inch MacBook Air enjoyers to the cause. And with an integrated suite of SEO tools, you can maximize prominence in searches to make sure that the most amount of people possible can find your stunning website. Check out squarespace.com today for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your website, head over to squarespace.com slash lukemiani to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now let's get back to the video. So as we've seen, by Macworld 2007, Apple had a long way to go to get the iPhone to launch. But what were things like six months even before that? Well, today, for the first time, I'm gonna show you. This iPhone is worth about half a million dollars. And I'm holding it in my hand and I am terrified about that fact. This is worth more than me. If we take a look at this phone, you can see things like a non-glossy plastic display, things like unfinished bezels that aren't polished or shiny. And if we turn it over, we find that the whole thing is anodized black. I actually really like that. And I think it would have been really cool if the original iPhone was all black. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Would you pay half a million dollars for a black iPhone 2G? We also can find this unit sticker that has all of the sources for the different components. The battery is from Sony. The microphone is from MWM. A lot of the parts like the housing and the proximity flex are from Foxconn. These are the kinds of stickers that you find on really early production samples where they were trying to figure out what combination of parts, which manufacturers, which factories were getting things right. And that's one of the reasons why this is so rare and so valuable. And it's also one of the reasons why it's sibling yet another half a million dollar iPhone is also equally rare and valuable. And I'm sitting here with about a million dollars in front of me. What the fuck? That's more than I'll make in like my lifetime. And it's like two old ass iPhones. Now the really cool thing about having two half a million dollar iPhones in front of me is that I can show you guys the earliest ever version of iOS. These are two of the test UIs that Apple was looking at. On the left here, we can see this block-based interface, which is very, very simplistic. And the cancel button doesn't work, and below it says, wow, isn't this ugly, battery level zero, which I don't think is accurate, because we charged this thing for a little while. The battery level doesn't do anything? Doesn't do anything. Cool. Half a million dollars. <laughs> we can see here we have a music test, um, which is empty. We have messages, which is empty. <laughs> and, well, look at that. It's got at least a keypad. So that's nice to see. The SMS is also a keypad. Wait a minute. Does this thing not have a keyboard? Wow, that's how early these phones are. And you may have noticed on the other one, this UI is, is honestly unlike anything I've ever, ever seen before. It shut down, so let's reboot it. All right, we're rebooting it. <laughs> Don't worry, it's half a million dollars. Just plug it in, it's fine. Basically what we're looking at here is an iPod interface running on an iPhone. You can see we have our menu, our play pause, our forward and backward, and this right here, is a digital scroll wheel. And we can click on it. No, we can't. How do you click on stuff? Oh, there you go, up top, okay. And we can scroll around, we can go back to the menu. No, we can't. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Hang on, give it a second. They were six months away from announcing the iPhone, and this is what they were working with. This is oh, unbelievably man. difficult to navigate, but we do have Oh no, it went into clock. It thinks it's 2000. 
if you press too hard on the top, it thinks that you're clicking on something. But here we go, I found it. We got brick. This is quite possibly the very first iPhone mobile game ever in all of history that I'm playing right now on a $500,000 phone. This is really weird. Brick is difficult. No, I lost brick. I was really close. I almost won brick on the first ever iOS mobile game, but I didn't, didn't quite pull it off. So that is honestly pretty crazy to think about that for a while, Apple toyed with having an iPod interface with a virtual scroll wheel on a touchscreen. That is absolutely wild. If you wanna see more in depth, make sure to get subscribed to Donglebook Pro. He's gonna do a full rundown on the operating systems on both of these phones. So definitely get subscribed and look forward to that video. But we're not done yet, there's more. So this is one of the first phones that has an actual glass display and that puts it somewhere between January and June of 2007. Now it looks more or less exactly like uh, the actual launch version, except of course we have a blank back with no engraving. And also this thing is running Switchboard, which is a testing version of iPhone OS that allows us to see just where Apple was at this point in development. So on Switchboard, there are only six main functions. We have Soundwave, which allows you to test different audio clips. There's none on this particular phone. We also have Skank Phone. Um, apparently that's a reference to one of the Mac versus PC ads that they ran. Then we have Rumble. Basically what this allows you to do is log testing for the uh, accelerometer function of the phone. Then we have AT command, which is a very clever Star Wars AT AT walker. And this allows us to get a look at a very early version of iOS's keyboard. Admittedly, is not an easy keyboard to type on. And that's because this is before Apple implemented the keyboard tech that made the iPhone possible. Essentially what iPhones from release until even now do is when you're typing, the keyboard figures out what letters are most likely to come after what you've just typed and it makes the hitboxes for those keys larger. So if you type a consonant, then the hitboxes for a vowel will become larger and that makes it easier to type on a small screen. This doesn't have that and it's very difficult to type on even when it's horizontal like this. And then we have a burn-in tester for the display. And finally, operator, which is an all-in-one testing suite that allows us to do stuff like test the camera. You can see if I lift the phone up, the frame rate's not good, but the camera is in fact working. We can test the Wi-Fi, the GSM here. If you press the button, the button will activate there. I can turn the volume up. We even have ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, headphones, temperature, serial number, nice clever little uh, serial box icon there. So all of this gives us an idea of how much work happened in such a little time to go from this half a million dollar iPhone that has an iPod interface to the one that you can actually buy. All of this happened in one year with an absolutely insane level of time, work, money, and dedication. These iPhones were so fragile when the development team was working on them that most of them couldn't be shipped from the factory where they were produced to Cupertino. The executives had to fly over and bring them back in their carry-on luggage. That's how fragile these things were. And just a year later, you could go into a store and buy one. And the rest is history. The iPhone is probably the greatest technological achievement of the modern millennium. And this is where it all began. And I will now be returning this because I'm terrified to hold it because it's worth half a million dollars and there's 
Dude, there's like a $1.2 million of iPhones on this table right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check out Dongle Book Pro, who's gonna go much more in depth on the million dollar iPhones. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.